All right, folks, welcome back once again to Daytona Beach in Florida. So yesterday I got here in Daytona Beach. I had a flight like really early in the morning. I got here in the afternoon. Michael picked me up at the airport, which was really cool. Thank you. But so I got to your place. You started showing me about your trades and your account and stuff and how you do things. And I saw on your kind of screen on the metrics, I saw like $780. And that's what you made in the day, $780 or something of a sort. So I want to know like, what's up with that? What happened? Uh, I don't know. Oh, oh no. Uh, actually, and there was a day where, you know, yesterday was a day where it just, I mean, I did, did some trading in the morning. Uh, I had to go get you at the airport. And then we came back and um, in the morning I went, you know, I jumped in the pool a little bit after the market opened and stuff. So there was you know, a couple trades here and there, but uh, a combination of some option selling premium that I did, uh, a, a Forex trade, I think there was one on there that I closed, yeah, I closed. I mean, it wasn't one of those like, oh, big home run. I don't want to give this impression that it's like this big home run hitter. But I think it's funny how when you, you came, when, you came to my place, and I was, I was you know, showing, you didn't even get your suitcase unpacked. Like I was showing you like my trading platform, and so it happened to be on. You go like, "What's this?" I was like, and just like two trader junkies, we go right to the screen. So it was, I was explain, showing my platform and how it differs differs from yours and stuff. And, I, and you're like, "What's this?" Is that's my P and L? And I says, "You didn't really trade today." I says, "Yeah, I really kind of didn't." So that was the thing, and it kind of opened my eyes. I really don't look at my P and L a lot during the day, but then it was a good, d decent day. I mean, it's it's P and L is relative, I think, yeah, yeah, but. Course. I think, it, you know, we kind of summarized that, like, you, you mentioned, like, well, you were sitting by the pool, then you had breakfast out, you went to the airport to get me, then we were talking, like, I didn't see you trade all day. Well, I kind of had, you know, I put one in before into the airport, and then it was, but I think it kind of represents that trading is not just sitting in front of a desk all day, or say, making a run to the store, or going to pick you up at the airport, wasn't like a hindrance. Yeah. The business continues. And that's one thing, I, I think if you set this up right, and it's like a business of trading, then that means that you, you, you like, you're not paid for your time, you're paid for your, I would say your skill or your, I don't know what, your, your development or something of the sort? Yeah, I mean, I have a, uh, actually, back in my home office, I have a, a big sign that says, I'm paid to be patient. Uh, yeah, and okay. yeah, it's, it's kind of a cool thing, because a lot of times, you, know, you set your stop and you set your target, like, you know, R1, R2, R3, you know, to get to R3, you have to get to R1 to get to R2. And a lot of times you're in the green then. And it takes patience, it takes stamina to do that. And part of that for me, at least, and I've learned this, is to stay away from the screen. Let the trade do its thing. And I think what you saw there when you go, wow, what's this? Like, I, was, oh, that's, I guess my p &L for the day. That was kind of being paid to be patient. I wasn't managing a lot, you know, you know, granted when I was, I got to the airport and I was waiting for you, I had, you know, I had my phone on, I had my things like this, but I wasn't like banging out trades all day. Um, yeah, that, that's actually somewhat different than say five years ago where I would have probably been doing that, closing, opening, closing. Um, you know, I guess part of the freedom lifestyle is to, you know, let trades work more and I had to build my muscle about patience. And if you ask a lot of traders, that's a, a weakness. So, but it's funny how when we walk through it, you're like, I, I can tell like you still like, I don't think he understands like what, like, well, where are your trades? I go, well, there's this. And like, I had to even look at my activity because I don't, I forgot. Like yeah. I don't, that's, that's kind of a cool thing. So, and that's what interests me too, is that you have a very different trading style than I have. Like it's not just string trading, it's more options, which is like, I think really interesting. We really something that I was learning a lot about yesterday. I had like a crash course about option, which yeah. was like kind of cool. So <laughs> I was really curious about it. Though, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. And so uh, the question that most people will have in their mind and they don't want to ask, but they have in their mind, and I'm going to ask is, is that the same thing you do every day? Like do you do a thousand dollars every day or $750 every day? Or is that varying a lot? It varies a lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's days I'm, you, know, you have some red days and stuff and it's okay. It's part of the process. Um, a lot of times to have really good days, you have to put, you know, there's a lot of effort that gets put in and sometimes just the market volatility, it just all kind of comes into play. I think that maybe was part of it yesterday. And honestly, that number probably should have been a lot bigger. But I was busy, I was doing other things, and I put very little effort. I, you know, in the morning, I watched the pre-markets, this, I got my market profile numbers, which is like, to me is incredibly important. Um, and in the option space, I mean, my regular futures trades I had worked out pretty well, the Forex one, you know, hit target. Um, but in options, you, you really are paid to be patient. So a lot of that was kind of just let them work. And it's funny, I was showing you my platform, and like every five, 10 minutes, you're like, hey, your number kept going up. You're, never gonna, like, you're not yeah. doing anything. I said, yeah, but it's just, that's the beauty of, and, and you, options is a unique space. I mean, it's outside the Forex stuff, but it's, uh, you know, when things work in the option space, a lot of it is hands off. 
Um, and it was interesting to see as a trader who like, you know, you're, you've been a trader for a while and you were even like, this is pretty cool. Like yeah. you even had a light bulb moment. And I'm like, yeah, ETN's like, I'm gonna convert <laughs> into an options guy. Uh, options is, is playing a bigger part of my uh, thing. Yeah. One, because it's less time, less effort, but also it, it's a perfect vehicle for the freedom lifestyle. Um, futures is rough. I mean, it's it's you know, it's tough, and you got to be on top of things. I mean, I'm I'm changing stop orders literally in between our videos here. So, um, but on the options, I kind of just let them work. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's cool. I and mean, I'm glad you got the chance to experience that. I mean, barely getting off the plane and seeing that we have different styles, and that that's pretty cool as a trader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And what I like about options, the thing you mentioned to me yesterday, is the fact that. You don't really have to be there like all day and only once a day could be fun, pretty much. To be able to look at your trades, place trades, and then you're done. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, in fact, when I kind of engage myself too much during the day, I tend to, you know, overmanage a little bit. And I've looked at, I've done trade journal reviews and stuff and said if I just left it where it originally was, I probably would have been just fine. So, um, you know, so I, you know, I kind of went through that learning cycle too. But yeah, it's a, it's a great space. Um, you know, it's obviously beyond Forex, although I do sell Forex premium options as well. So uh, while you're, you know, with your strategy, I'll use similar strategies, but I'll just use a different vehicle like options as opposed to, uh, you know, the pairs and stuff. Yeah. So, and we're, we're gonna have the same outcome. I mean, basically we want the same thing most of the time. Uh, but like we said yesterday, you know, I can be right on direction flat on direction so it would be a break even and still make money and even if I lose goes against me I can still do a little bit and that helps it's I look at it as a different revenue stream even though it's trading I look at it as like a separate income revenue stream yeah. which is pretty cool I do want to talk about just a little bit about setup for people just understand what that's about sure. so tell people kind of what you do exactly with options and we'll try to keep it simple so people kind of sure. Sure, I won't, I won't use any options terminology like, you know, vertical spreads and iron condors. <laughs> oh, I just said it. So, no, but um, really when you're looking at, say, and, you know, use the Forex example on your Bollinger Band reversals, you know, obviously you set an entry because you're looking for it to reverse back to that, you know, norm, that mean or whatever, and, you know, the reversal trend. Um, that's a long, like in that case, that's a long trade for you. If you're going long, you want the price to go in a certain direction. Um, I'm doing the exact same thing just with a different product and that's options. The additional benefit of it is that if price doesn't have to go to my R3 for me to be completely profitable. In fact, if price just stays there, the the erosion of premium, and that's another term, I don't want to get too crazy, but time erodes those premiums and I can make money off of that too. So I don't have to be right and also I don't have to be right right away. In fact, if the stop, it gets close to a stop, my risk is defined, so maybe while a, a, a currency pair trader may get stopped out, I can hang in there because the time erosion is going to help me and maybe get a break even or, or at least I know my risk is defined. Mm -hmm. Different product, different variables, you can actually make more on currency pair trade like you have. So I'll make less, but I'll, my probability of profit is, I believe, higher and uh, I'm comfortable with that. So my win rate is much higher, but my profits are sort of capped that i'm okay with that that's yeah, that's fine with that's me really fun, yeah. yeah you know keep, I, keep those wins coming i think that's people that's something people want to have too is they want to have a high reward, a high high win rate and uh, maybe a little reward to risk is fun for them yeah I, I mean my you know direction picking things and futures is tops i think 62 63 percent on average uh, last year was 63 and a half you know, with options, you can set your probabilities of profit, and mine's about 78%. That's pretty good as a trade. I mean, like 78%, yeah, four to five. Now, granted, some of your losers may be bigger than your, your gains, but they're not like huge. They're not like wipe out account kind of stuff. Um, and it's good. And the best part about it is I can be, I don't have to be right on direction to make money. That's cool. I could be wrong and still make money. Like So this is kind of, you know, the past three or four years I've, I've developed, and eventually it's probably gonna be 80% of my business. Uh, right now I look at it as additional revenue stream. Um, but the cool thing, uh, you know, is you can do Forex. It's like if you have the same Bollinger Band reversal setup, you can just use a different product, such as options, and you could even use currency futures if you really want. Um, you're still gonna have the same outcome. I mean, we'll still have the same high five when we hit R3. It's just my P&L may be different, maybe lower than your students. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm okay with that. and. Uh, it allows for a really cool freedom lifestyle, which is becoming more and more very important to me, uh, you know, as, as, as you can see here in beautiful Daytona Beach. Yeah. 
I'm curious to know what do you want to do with that. So let's say on a day that you make seven hundred fifty dollars or whatever amount you make, could be lower, could be more, doesn't matter. But what what would be your ideal day? Um, my ideal day, and, and this is you know I, I don't want to like circumvent the question. My ideal day, every day, my ideal play, uh, ideal day is to execute my plan. Uh, honestly, the P and L, like you noticed it, yeah, because uh, it said P and L in the green, and, and I'm like. Oh yeah, like I, it's, it's, I know this sounds weird, but it's like an afterthought. Yeah, My job is to that, yeah. execute the plan. And that plan that day was get up, uh, you know, I was up early for the pre-markets, there was some things and uh, get my numbers, have my strategy. But then my plan was, I think 11.30, I'm gonna you know, just go to the pool. It's supposed to be sunny and I gotta make sure I pick you up and I get that, I make sure they're on time. That's like my plan. Um, and as you can see, when we got back, like it was just like, okay. I think the best thing you could do as a trader is take the P&L off the screen, execute the plan. If, it, if you have an edge and it works, just focus on that. Yeah. You know, I don't know, it's, uh, you know, and some of my other accounts that there was some, I didn't even show you that, you know, there's some gains there and there's a couple of losses and some other ones, but, uh, and my managed account had a good day, but just, that's just, again, it's about execution. Uh, you talked about what's your big four. Uh, review, execution, yeah. planning. Planning, execution, review, and growth. Right, and I would add three more to that. Execution, <laughs> executor, no, <laughs> is, is just you know having a plan prepared for that yeah. day and uh, just execute the plan. I know if I do that, I'll be fine. If I don't, that's where problems come up, you know? And uh, I, still, I still have those sort of compliance errors and I, you know, I'm a risk guy, so I look at compliance as a big part of my business and um, if I'm compliant with my plan and I have a losing day, I have no problem with that. It really doesn't bother me at all because, you know, the edge, you just keep doing that edge, 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 and eventually those numbers, you know, play out. So that's, that's I, I know that kind of circumstance your question, but it's, yeah, it's, I don't look at the P&L that much. Uh, since you mentioned managed accounts, we'll talk about that more in a different video, how you manage money for people in China and investors it and stuff. It is different for sure. Which is really cool. So, but I want to thank you guys now for watching this now. We'll finish this up for a bit of today for this video. And thank you, Michael, once again for sharing this. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you comment below in the comment section. Michael will be answering the question in the comments, of course. And uh, we'll catch you guys pretty soon. Absolutely. Here, as always, are a few comments for the past video. We we'll appreciate you guys for your comments, as always. And we'll catch you back here pretty soon. Ciao. Ciao.